everybody in video land. This is the Home Movie Coach, and I've got a super cool, super spacey tutorial for you today. We're going to animate this starship as it flies by a planet with a sun rising behind it in After Effects. This is far simpler than it looks, and since most of animation is fiddling around with the details, we're going to skip the details and just paste up the individual elements so you know exactly how this comes together. And I look forward to finding out what you guys come up with, because I'm sure no two will be alike. Some of these elements are handmade in After Effects, and some of them are downloaded from the net. Make sure you get all your proper permissions in order, and if you don't like that, then go ahead and make them yourself from scratch. But as long as we're just practicing, let's go ahead and use what we got. First, we're going to start with a... First, we're going to start in After Effects, and we're going to start with a new project. And now we have a blank palette here where our project details are going to go. So we're going to double click inside there and bring in the first. And what we need, first of all, is a background. We're going to uh, create some space. Um, so we're going to start with a new composition. We're going to call it uh, Flyby. And we're going to set it at the DV preset 720p, about 15 seconds. And there's our black screen. So we're going to take that Stellar Nursery and drag it over. If you hit uh, Option, Command, and F for Fit, it'll fill the composition. And when it first comes up, there's just going to be a little bit too much space here. And to get rid of that, we're just going to drag it out. We need a little bit of breathing space anyway, so we can animate this later. So we're just going to pull it out a little ways, something cozy, and let go. Now, we need a planet to hang in this, and that is far simpler than you might think. We're going to start by loading a texture for the planet. Again, these kind of textures can be found online at any good astronomical or CG texture website. good place to start is planetpixelemporium.com. So, in order to get this on the screen, we're going to have to drag it out here. It's going to create a new composition down here. Or, I'm sorry, a new layer in the composition automatically. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the effects and presets and we're going to type in CC Sphere. And that comes up. That's available uh, with anybody's After Effects. It's not a fancy plugin. We're just going to drag that over to the middle of the composition. You could also take it down to the layer. We'll put it on the composition. And whoa, all of a sudden we have a planet. Yes, it is that simple. So now we've got some things we need to do with this planet. CC Sphere gives us all kinds of 3D um, controls. I think, uh, you know, this is where all the fiddling comes in. But just to give you an idea how easy this is to spin it, that's the wrong way. We grab the Y rotation, and now we've got a spinning planet. We can make it spin as fast or slow as we want. We don't just want it to spin, we want it to uh, fade off into the distance. We have three presets that will do that. We're going to work with a rotation Y axis, we're going to work with the offset, and then uh, we're going to work with the radius. And all three of these are keyframeable. So we're on the first frame, so let's set the for keyframes for offset, radius, and Y rotation. And since this is first frame, we want this planet to be in the background toward the beginning and then kind of come into the foreground. Uh, we're going to shrink this thing off. We're going to start with the radius and we're going to shrink it down to eh, something that's in the distance. And then we're going to uh, play with the offset by shifting this over, say, into the upper right-hand corner. That's keyframed already. And then we're going to leave the rotation alone. We're going to find out which direction we want it to turn. I think I like this direction better, that direction. So we're going to go that way. Okay, we're going to start at zero. Okay, then we're going to come to the end frame, which is 15 seconds later. And now you can see that we're down on the end of the timeline here on the scrub line. And we want it to be full size at this point. So we're going to crank that radius up big enough to look like we're flying over the planet. We're going to move that sucker down, about like that. And then we're going to get it to rotate maybe a half a turn so it looks more realistic. We don't want it spinning out of control. It's a planet, after all. So 
Now we back up to the beginning of the timeline. Okay, we're using our time controls now. At the beginning of the timeline, click that. It goes to zero seconds. Click play. And we've already got ourselves a planet animation. Notice that the orbit of the planet, the spinning of the planet, is not so fast that you can notice it. If, you, if the planet is spinning so fast that you notice, it looks more like a graphic or a, or a planetarium display instead of a real planet. In fact, this one here may not be rotating enough, but part of the rotation is due to the fact that we're passing over the planet, and since we're trying to simulate a 3D object, we want to have it look like you know, you, you can see more of the planet on the other side as you fly by. So it looks like we could probably stand to have a little bit more um, rotation on that. So let's just spin it a little bit more. And we're at the last frame. I used the time controls to go to the last frame of the 15 second composition. And then I just, since I know the keyframe is there on that last frame, then I can just play with the rotation and it'll automatically adjust that free keyframe. And now let's see, let's uh, not impress ourselves too much and uh, get off of full resolution or well, half the resolution so we can see this a little bit more real time. You'll notice, if you haven't before, that the time controls, when they are uh, on play, uh, it'll give you the frame rate that it's currently playing at. If it says not real time, don't be deceived that what you're seeing is what the final composition is going to be. Um, it's a common mistake because uh, you can get your timing right, and if your uh, preview, if your RAM preview is not in real time, then uh, you, you output your movie, and then you look at it, and it's like, whoa, that's not the timing I wanted at all. So now we've got a pretty cool looking pretty cool looking planet spinning approaching us let's see if we can get that background to cooperate if we are flowing toward the planet then we're going to want those stars to kind of pass from the left to the right and since we're moving in a diagonal direction we're going to get it to uh, uh, move in the same direction we go down to stellar nursery this is where our background is and then uh, we want to get into the transform menu it gives a little bit more breathing space here and then we're going to play with the position. We're going to go back to the first. We only got two keyframe moments at this point, the beginning and the end of the timeline. So it's super easy to get there through the time controls. We'll go to the first frame, and then we're going to uh, adjust the position of the stars a little bit over. We don't want that logo. We're going to go that high and no higher. And then we're going to go to the last frame, which is also a keyframe, and we're going to move these stars down as far as we can and get that diagonal motion going on. So, you know what I forgot? The keyframe button. Let's do that now. Go back and get them stars back up where we wanted it. See, now we're keyframing, so now it's recorded. You can actually see in this case the little uh, triangular yellow guys that say, I'm recording what you're doing. Now, when we play, we should have those stars drift right by and it looks more like we're in motion. That's pretty simple.